I'm David and welcome to another episode of Camera Peeps and please welcome back once again our colleague Andre Switzer. Glad to be back again David. Andre, I'm very excited about uh, what you've brought along today. Can you please... More old technology. Yeah, we love it and I think a lot of people out there uh, will love this video as well. Okay, we've got here an RCA TK76 and this camera was uh, one of the revolutionary changes in portable video recording. So you've got to remember they were still using 16mm film. So to go video was sort of a bit of a, ooh, you know, these horrible grainy pictures. 76, sorry, that represents? Yes, TK76 came out at, in 1976. This was the first version of them. They did use them up until about the early 80s. And uh, other companies came out to compete with them too, like you had Philips, JBC, Sony. So they were all trying to get onto the... ENG market as it were but this camera was even though it was an ENG it was an EFP for electronic field production. So does that mean it had a CCU on the back or did they just make you, um, Generally not oh, okay. you basically controlled all the functions okay. up here. Yep. You could however use it in a studio situation with the modification and actually have remote mm -hmm. CCC, CCU operations yep. through multi-core cable but uh, they were generally used as a field camera and for also RCA is Radio Corporation of America. Of America yeah, yeah, so it's, an, it's a US camera because we tend to just associate yeah. video cameras with Japan, basically. Yeah, no, this, this, was, is, this, was this is American made. Yeah. So they became quite big for a while. There's a few thousand of them around towards the late 70s around the world. So they were in pretty stiff competition with Sony and all those sorts well, of places. Well, when I started the early days of my career, Channel Line didn't have any at all, but they were definitely on the road. The Channel 7 here in Melbourne. Yeah, well, they even yeah. had them in the studios in some cases as a studio camera. Now, you could get a kit that made it more substantial and changed the lens mm. so it was more suitable for a studio application, but it was still the same mechanics. Yeah. It just was a different structure and uh, mm. you could do that. But I do remember thinking, I'm glad I don't have to use one of those. Now, Andre, I noticed this camera doesn't have a, a shoulder pad, so that suggests it may have... It most likely came out of a studio environment. And it's been modified for different for like an ENG application, but it could have been used for like a, a, a news break type situation or some sort of very small studio arrangement due, due to the size of the lens. So they did use them a lot for that. But I recall also it was before I started in the industry, um, but the studio environments had um, generally had like a three three camera chains and yep. I remember when these uh, port and I think Ikigami had one as well and they often used it as the fourth camera a in a handheld situation so those variety shows they could just get the low angles on the floor of the musicians and things like that so that was possibly yeah a little bit like the GoPro of the 70s I suppose exactly. that's you could a good say. way of so, it yeah but I mean the GoPro would be smaller than the viewfinder know, yeah. which is here yep. which was just a black and white CRT mm. Mm. monitor miniature one yeah so uh yeah the, the, primarily this was the handheld get around get the audience reaction shots quickly all those sorts yes. of things yeah. so they had a bit of use they made some commercials with them as well mm -hmm. depending on what your budget was mm -hmm. usually you do it on film but the cheaper ones were done with these yeah. and uh, as a news camera and quite often they were ideal for live crosses into newses mm -hmm. and things like that. So you'd have a link truck and you'd simply power it up. Now, there was two ways you powered these up. If it was sort of more for a live application, you would run the 12 volt power through the standard four pin yes. XLR and just composite video out, Yes, which you could do that way. So it's interesting looking at this camera now. Um, it's got this huge sort of heat sink at the front. So obviously there was a bit happening there, but it's three tubes, is that right? Yeah, so, it's three so tubes. Two, two yep, three tubes, tubes. inside. Yeah, okay. uh, standard sort of prism arrangement. Yep. So um, now being tube cameras, that was another disadvantage with this technology. At the time it was an advantage because mm -hmm. they were able to miniaturise it mm -hmm. to get it to be a colour camera. Because yep. colour, you've got to remember, 76 for mm -hmm. Australia, that mm -hmm. was um, very, very early colour. Yeah. We'd only had it for a year or two. And, and also I remember when I started, I had using that expression, but um, Channel 9 had changed completely to videotape. They were the first TV station to change completely to videotape. The others still uh, were running a bit of film and a bit of videotape. But I would imagine when this came out, it was probably like a specialised crew and the, it would have just been dispatched to a court story or something well, when they didn't have the time to process yeah. the film. Well, so. these were specifically designed for live mm. ENG crosses. So that was the big advantage with these. So you'd have your live eye truck or your link fan mm. or whatever you want to call it. 
this was the ultimate way of getting a picture back. They still shot on film yes. and rushed that back to the studios, but yes. this meant you could get live action as it happened. So mm -hmm. this was the first of the really yeah. convenient, comportable cameras that was of uh, substantial quality to, yeah. to do that. So this camera, Andre, what sort of switches and functions did it have? Well, you could get gain, which was for low-light mm -hmm. conditions, so you could add plus nine of mm -hmm. gain in there. Now, it was already pretty ordinary mm -hmm. without plus nine. When you switched it in, it was, if you're really desperate to get something in low light, you'd get it, but the noise was mm -hmm. quite substantial. Mm -hmm. um, you had a color bar reference switch. Yes. You had standby and uh, power on. Standby kept the tubes going, so that meant that if you, rather than having a cold start, because it had to warm up. Well, it kept the tubes warm, yeah. and, but it kept the VTR in a standby mode, so it's safe. Correct, uh, yes. yeah, if you had it connected to a VTR, mm. but it was the big thing was, mm. especially with uh, something, if you had to get something quickly, mm -hmm. if you had a cold start, you needed at least mm -hmm. 30 seconds before it could get a reasonable sort of picture out of it. So standby mm -hmm. just kept it in idle mode, mm -hmm. but your battery power is de depleting yeah, okay. still fairly quickly. Okay. And uh, you've got a filter wheel, and yeah, that was pretty much about it. And a VTR button is that a VTR yep, button? Yeah, VTR stop start okay. button was up on here. Well, well, a bit of trivia um, because there will I know some colleagues will be watching this video, and there was a Channel Seven cameraman Gene, who was famous for for, 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 him, yeah. for operating this camera. So we have to say g'day. And there's also another cameraman, in ex Melbourne guy who's on the Gold Coast now, Peter Tyrus, and his nickname is actually TK. And I'm not sure if it's because of this camera. I always assumed it was. Maybe he can get back to us. But I'll have to mention these guys because we're all from this era. So this lens that came with this camera, it has a, a zoom servo as well? Uh, this particular one yeah. does have a zoom servo, but uh, it did have other lenses. It was a standard mm -hmm. sort of lens mm -hmm. mount. So you, as I was saying before, in studio mm -hmm. application, you could put a completely different lens on it. Yeah. So this, this is pretty much standard when you bought the camera. That is mm -hmm. what you got. Yeah. So, I mean, you could custom design whichever lens you wanted with the kit, but this was, this was just very standard. Yeah, and I remember, once again, our colleague Gene, he had this, and I remember he, the the, guy, the Channel 7 guys had the, these Christie battery belts. That's right, yep. And, you know, it's a sort of big, thick belt, and, you know, put the camera down, but to get the thing up and running, you have to sort of put this thing on, and the curly cord. And well, then, so there's cables was, everywhere, and then if, if there was a portable light situation... That's, that's what you'd use this cable for to power it off those battery belts or another well it was pretty much like having a diver's belt wrapped around it you. was well because so. if the light went on top which was a color tran mini pro for my That's recollection right. yep. with a 30 volt um cine battery belt what's that what was the name cine 60 or something uh, was I can't it? And, the name, no. and a 250 watt 30 volt globe um so that was another battery belt christy or whatever on the, <coughs> on the side so they were quite heavy and, and quite messy to sort of operate. Well, by the time you finish, there's a lot of stuff to carry around. And, and I think this era too is when a lot of um, the film guys bailed out to pursue their film careers because you know it was, it was many ways it was a well, painful, film was, painful growing growing pains. Yeah, well, film was still the mm. the medium to gather news on pretty much. These well, it was were so still quick. trying to come. The CP sixteen it was so quick. Yeah. You just pressed the record button. No, you pressed the button and it was recording. No warm up yeah, time or anything. That's so. right. But, um, yeah, so they, they powered them mm -hmm. off the battery belts. But, I mean, you'd only get a limited amount of time. And if you had a light going, mm -hmm. you'd probably only get about 10 minutes mm -hmm. on those batteries for running a light, you know, yeah, depending exactly. on the condition of the batteries. And really, it had to be very quick and organised to get it done, and there was a lot of weight. Yeah, and you had to, you had to um, concentrate as well, you know, saving the battery. So you couldn't leave the light on. You had to all these, all these issues. Yeah, and that, that was the challenge for the live cross. Mm -hmm. If you were on location and you had a live cross to do, I remember. You, <laughs> you would have to be very sort of sure mm. when you were coming out of a break and make mm. sure the light was on. And you had to have the light on to set your levels. Mm. Yes. And in a lot of cases, if you turn the power off, you'd lose the settings. So it was a real juggling And, and of course, the microwave links were, were analog, so everything had to be calibrated properly exactly, for yeah. it to work. So, yeah. And a lot of the time, yes, there were lighting kits that were available mm -hmm. with the link trucks, but the generator couldn't run everything. Mm -hmm. So quite often got left down to the mm -hmm. battery light on the camera because there just simply wasn't enough power to run all those lights. Mm -hmm. Now with LEDs, we're spoiled. Mm -hmm. You could run hundreds of them. Yeah. So, so that's the camera. So now what did we record to? Right. Well, that's a good question. So we've mentioned the fact that we could get the video out through a composite cable into the link truck yep. for live crosses. Mm -hmm. So that was one option. But uh, primarily for EFP production use, we had this, which weighs a ton. 
which was the uh, portable one inch recorder. Now mm -hmm. it could connect up to other mm -hmm. recorders, but this was sort of a preferred version. So what I'll do, I'll just open it up. And uh, as you can see there, that is, amazing. That, is the, that is a one inch portable recorder. Now, oddly enough, it's got RCA, but it was really actually made by Sony. Yeah, it was okay. rebadged, so they must have had some sort of a... I think that happened a bit. Right. I think, I think it yeah, did. Yeah. But um, in this case, this is a one inch one. So you could see how inconvenient this was, just to bring back these memories to some people that might have done this. You had to thread the tape up. And I'll just quickly do this. Now, we've just got this machine out of the cupboard, so it's not been used for quite some time but it is in working condition. So as you can see, it's a bit of a fiddle around to get the tape threaded up. So if you can imagine, I'm imagine still impressed this, that you can do it. Imagine this, David, if you can look back, you're trying to get the late breaking news story or something done in a hurry and you've got to go to all this so trouble. How much recording time would you get out of it? You get one hour. Okay. So you've got to go through all this. Mm. And hit standby. So what we're going to do is we'll just fire it up. I'm impressed that how it still, we go. still works. Yeah. So that's the head spinning around. Yeah. So basically, I'm just going to wind this through because we haven't used it for a while. But whilst it's doing that, so you close the lid. Oh, you can still operate. It's still operate it, yeah. yeah. So what would happen is this, this would connect up with this multi-core camera cable here. Yes. You'd plug okay, those yeah. in there, yeah. and you'd get, carry it like that. Yeah. And with all the noise it made, um, if you were really lucky, you'd be able to do your interview in peace. Right. So these were generally used for the um, more production type things, for more commercials and all that sort of thing. News didn't terribly much use this because this was a lot more of a consideration I, to move around. I would call, um, once again, before my time, big backpacks and once again if it was a big court late breaking court story I think there was like a it was possibly even not a news crew it was a production crew would go out yep. to, to do it I just noticed there's a compartment on the back is that yep the batteries went in the back there okay. so uh, we're talking BP90s you could, uh, yeah BP90s yeah, okay. they'd fit in the back so they could oh. go in there just add another being, few kilos of weight being BP90s that um, would basically mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. mean that they would finished their usable life yeah yeah that's um, amazing. Oh. So that's that's pretty much uh, in working mode there. But even the engineering is is pretty amazing there to have yeah. the, the the real stack like that and to get the angle. That's right. So the, basically, at the path. If, if you sort of look at this, that's what you had to put up with. So it was all the mechanical noise that was required mm. to do all that, and the fact that you could run the camera off this. Mm. But you lost battery power pretty quickly. It's interesting, quickly. if we had um, lithium batteries back then, that actually may have helped a little bit. Yeah, there was a fair amount of current drain. I'm just rewinding the tape now, and that's you had to rewind the tape. You couldn't just pull the cassette out yeah, where it was. You had to rewind it back, and that was another disadvantage with it. So, um, yeah, with the lithium batteries, it would probably run for a lot longer. But yeah. uh, for its time, I think you'd probably get half an hour out of it. I'm not a sure battery. if we can hear it. Yeah, that's basically all the. I think that's there'll the be tape some underneath. I'll so there's a take up reel. You had to pull it all the bits to get the reels off. I think there'll be some video so, tape operators out there that'll have tears in their eyes. Uh, maybe. Um, but anyway, that's oh. sort of um, probably it for the recording. And you could put other recorders on it. Well, I, which I, may I indulge? Um, this was this was my era. Yep. So um, this is a. PVU 50. <laughs> pop um, it on the table, David. Pop it on the Let's table, have, a look. have a look. <laughs> and that um, took the Umatic cassette. Which well, I this would have been a game changer. I actually, have well. Umatic cassette, but yeah. um, well, this would have been a game changer as well because it, certainly it was, was lighter. Yeah. This is just a recorder. It, it couldn't play back. Yeah. And there was another model called the BVU 110. Yep. And it played back. And I remember that this was standard for most crews. Yes. And I think we, there was about one or two crews had the 110s but no one liked carrying them because they no. were so heavy but whoever got whoever had the 110 was more likely to get dispatched to the regional stories 
yep. or wherever you have to play. And that. unlike the other one we had on the table, this one could only record the mm -hmm. other, the open reel one could replay but, but, and... But there was an advantage with that because you could never accidentally record over no. anything. Well, I think most people might have had a near few near misses yeah. with that situation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and also remember it, um, an idiosyncrasy of these was they didn't like cold weather and sometimes they wouldn't you'd hear it sort of start up and it wouldn't hear he wouldn't hear that clunk where the tape had totally wrapped around the drum and you actually i don't i can admit this now but you just drop it just drop it a couple of centimeters off the ground clunk and then it would finalize it yeah and sometimes that was up. also the solenoid for the pinch roller wouldn't yeah, go okay. in if you gave it a they, they had a pretty tough life, those. They did. Those were amazing workhorse, those yeah. things. I mean, they got knocked that's, around and bumped. That's it. And I was happy to see the end of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, for when they were developed, yeah. they were revolutionary. All right. Okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there. I think um, flashbacks for a lot of us <laughs> and a lot of people will be thinking, thank goodness I missed that era. Um, so, um, so thanks well, a lot, Andre, for coming that's all right. on. And, it's a pleasure and coming course, in. We'll do it again um, sometime. We will, we'll something we'll else. tap into another um, <laughs> part of your collection. And uh, thanks again, and we'll right. see you soon. No problems, David.